I've dealt with sleep paralysis for years, so much so that my body is now accustomed to the sensations that are a precursor to the terrible experience and I'm able to wake up fully before it takes hold of me. One thing I've always found to be truly bizarre about it is, is that I've never experienced it in my life until my ex told me about how it used to happen to her when she was younger. That night it happened to me and hasn't stopped, though it's become rarer and rarer. I had two experiences that leave me at a loss because I've never experienced anything like them and I'm not sure if they were just really intense episodes of sleep paralysis or if they were out-of-body experiences or something else, I do not know. The first experience I had was in 2009. I was lying in bed watching television and I fell asleep. Suddenly, I felt myself wake up and realize that I hadn't been sleeping long because the show that I had been watching was still on. I could only see half of the television because my blanket was pulled up, partially covering my face and it was making me sweat and making it difficult to breathe. I reached up to pull the blanket down and that's when I learned that something wasn't quite right because no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't able to pull the blanket from my face because my hand would just pass through it. Terrified, I jumped out of bed and was overcome by the strange, dizzy, and numb feeling in my head and throughout my entire body. I thought that maybe I was having a stroke or something, so I ran to my door to get my parents to take me to the hospital. I reached for the door handle, and just like with the blanket, my hand passed right through it. I tried to grab it several times and got the same result each time. My hand passed through it. I then tried to beat on the door really hard in hopes that the noise would wake someone in the house and that they would come check on me, but again, my hand passed right through the door. I then started to really freak out because I thought that I was dead and I began to hyperventilate and cried out to God. All of a sudden, it felt like there was a zap and I was back lying in my bed with the blanket over my face, only now I was able to pull it off. I jumped out of bed and ran out of my room and didn't go back to sleep for the rest of the night. I told my mom about it the next day, but she didn't really believe me and said it was just a nightmare, which, for all I know, it might have been. My second occurrence happened about a year later in the summer of 2010. It was mid-afternoon and I was feeling tired, so I decided to take a nap. I went and laid in bed and was struggling to fall asleep. I finally managed to start to drift off when my cell phone rang. I didn't want to answer it because I was almost asleep, but I reluctantly grabbed it and climbed out of bed. Without looking at the number, I answered and said hello. There was no response and so I said hello again. Still, there was no response. Irritated, I walked out of my room and down the hall toward the family room and said hello one more time out of frustration. Finally, a voice replied, but it was all static and breaking up. I said, I can't hear you, you're breaking up. Then the voice became clear and it said, Hello, I need you to do me a favor. I laughed thinking it was some sort of prank call because I didn't recognize the voice and I decided to play along. I asked what the favor was and then the voice completely changed from pleasant to this deep demonic growl and screamed, Let me in. I freaked out and threw my phone across the room. It hit the wall and shattered into pieces. My entire house began to shake like there was a massive earthquake and my vision got really weird. I just closed my eyes and said, God, please help me. I opened my eyes and was back in my bed, and my phone was sitting beside me in one piece and functional. I picked it up and quickly scanned through my call history, but there were no strange calls made. I also saw that only a few minutes had passed since I first started to fall asleep. I know this is long, but I wanted to share it in hopes that maybe someone out there has an explanation as to what these two events were, if they were just some really intense form of sleep paralysis or something else. 
I always have intense, vivid dreams, but these were beyond that. They both felt so unbelievably real, and they didn't seem like I was sleeping at all, though I apparently was. They still kind of freak me out when I think of them, and would like some insight into them. I think I've been seeing shadow people for a very long time. I remember my old apartment on Elliott Avenue in Yonkers, New York. I would often see shadows scurrying in my room and other rooms from the corner of my eye. I would often feel like I was being watched and I always felt it stronger in my own room. However, my first actual contact with these shadows did not happen until we moved to our current location. It was 1998 and I was 16 at the time. That cold December Sunday started as it did every year. We were celebrating the Virgin Mary at our church and my family was busy getting everything needed packed into the car for the ride to church. As it is every year, the celebration was very tiring and everyone was exhausted when we returned home at 6pm. I remember telling my parents, after helping unpack the car, that I was going to go to sleep. It had to be no later than 7.30pm. I fell asleep fairly quickly and began having a chasing nightmare. As it is with these nightmares, right before I was caught, I woke up. As I was soothing myself so that I could go back to sleep, I noticed a shadow of a man standing near my closet door at the head of my bed on the right. The shadow was distinctly darker and could easily be seen. Bright red eyes could clearly be seen coming from it. I was startled and frightened as a sense of evil could clearly be felt. As I was looking at him straight on, he walked toward me until he was standing next to me looking down at me. Seconds later, the shadow raised his hand and plunged it into my chest. He began to pull out a bright silver cord or rope from my chest and I could feel myself almost floating up as he did this. I remember thinking, oh my god, he's trying to take my soul. Immediately, I grabbed the cord as well and began to have a tug of war with the thing. For a while he was winning and I was very scared. I suddenly remembered that the Hail Mary is supposed to defeat demons and evil and began to recite it in my head like I had no tomorrow. Within a few seconds of me starting, the shadows stopped and looked down at me with a palpable hatred. I heard it say that I had won this time, but the next time. The shadow did not physically speak but I heard his voice in my head. After saying this, he opened his hand and the cord zipped into my body like a rubber band that had been stretched. It slammed into me so hard I jumped from my bed. However, the shadow thing was still there, looking down at me. And then I woke up. I did not understand what had happened and I can't fully explain the experience. I was awake when that attack happened but I still felt like I had woken up. However, the thing had gone. Needless to say, I was quite scared. At the time, I kept trying to soothe myself, telling myself it was all a dream, and after a few minutes, I fell asleep again. I had a restless night until something extraordinary happened. That night, as I was trying to go to sleep and thinking of my experience, I felt the side of my bed go down, like someone sat down. I didn't open my eyes, but prayed and eventually did fall asleep. Since then, I have been plagued by things trying to open my door and always around the same day. My Decembers are not pleasant. In 2007, I was visiting my cousin in Nicaragua, and we were talking about all the paranormal things that have happened to both of us. She described an attack that happened to her by a shadow person in December of 1998 as well. She had been sleeping with my two other cousins, her sister next to her. This thing with glowing red eyes began to strangle her. My other cousins tried to fight the thing off and finally all three managed to do so. When they turned on the light, my cousin had handprints around her neck, verifying her experience. After we compared the approximate time of our experiences, 
we noted that they both happened approximately at the same time. I'm 18 years old and I live in Killeen, Texas. I've lived in this area for 16 years of my life and all of my experiences have happened here. It started when I was very young, young enough that I had to swim in the kiddie pool at a public pool. Otherwise, I would need a swimming vest to be in the deep end. My mother took my sister and me to the public pool in Harker Heights. She was with my younger sister, Rachel is younger by a year, in the deep end and I was supposed to stay in the kiddie pool until it was my turn to swim with the help of my mother in the deep end. I was tired of waiting and ready to jump in, so you know what? I was going to do a cannonball. I took a running start and jumped, but I jumped too soon and not far enough. The back of my head slammed into the concrete wall of the pool. I passed out and started to drown. I just remember falling asleep and I woke up with a lifeguard over me. He had performed CPR and revived me. I was carted off to the emergency room in an ambulance, only to be told that I was perfectly fine. A year or two later, I began having violent dreams. I told my mom about them, and she and her friends said they might be prophetic. These dreams continued, and I started seeing things while I was awake. Once I was talking to my mother, and I started to cry, because I saw a kind of film or veil-like mist go over her face and it was the face of a man snarling at me. After this, when I was nine years old, I was diagnosed with clinical depression and anger. Things have increased more and more as I got older. Lately, they have turned into physical attacks but what I believe to be a demon. Later this year, I woke up when it felt like I couldn't breathe. I felt like something had me pinned down. I couldn't scream or cry for help. I could just barely see this black mass that sat over me. It was really sitting on my chest. I'm usually a woman that can hold her own and defend herself, but when something dark and demonic takes away your ability to fight back, it's probably one of the worst feelings ever. I hate feeling helpless. Then, as the cold air kept strangling me, I actually woke up. I believe it was a false awakening with a demonic attack. I tried doing my own research and a few weeks later my friend texted me saying that she couldn't get back to sleep after the experience she just had. She told me that she was awakened when she heard something step in between her bed and the fan that was next to the bed. She said that she was almost paralyzed by fear but started reciting scripture, and when she did, this darkness spoke to her and said that God wouldn't help her because she was a sinner, because she was damned. She said she couldn't sleep again until about 6 a.m. After this, I opened up to her about what I had experienced. We agreed that we might have been targeted by something dark or demonic. After that, I met this guy named Seth who seemed really nice and sweet. He and I spoke over Facebook a little and then started texting. Something about him caused me to pull away. Several times he told me that he desperately wanted a child. Once he even said, financially and realistically, I'm not ready for a baby, but emotionally, I need one. I'm sorry, what? What man has ever said I need a child? He hadn't even taken me on a date and he's telling me what he expects of me. I started to get this feeling that I should cut off interaction with him. This was further validated when my sister said she heard a bang at our back door. I didn't see anything, but I locked all doors and went to bed. That same night, I had a nightmare that I was in our kitchen and I heard a loud bang. I looked over and saw Seth's face in the window near the back door. He was glaring at me and he burst in with a knife. That's when I woke up, shaking and immediately blocked his cell phone number and his Facebook page. A few days after this, I got a call from an unrecognized number. I answered it only to hear the angry voice of Seth. What happened? I can't find your page. Did you get my text? I hung up without saying anything and blocked the number. I haven't been harassed by him since. 
I believe my nightmare was a premonition of the possible future relationship spiraling into his control over me if I didn't break it off. So I did. I've had experiences with paranormal activity my whole life. It runs in my family after all. I don't refer to myself as psychic, but someone who is very sensitive or in tune with it. They usually talk to me in dreams, and that's when I see what they look like most of the time. But when I'm awake and they want to talk, well, let's just say that is when things get interesting. The first major experience that happened to me was one summer when I was going into the seventh grade. My older sister and I shared a room, and she was going to start her first year of high school. Sadly, before the school year ended of her eighth grade year, her friend got into a car crash that instantly killed him. Others were in the car with him as well, but were only injured. My sister wasn't the same after that, and neither was our room that we shared. It felt like the air was thicker at times, or the energy was off. As time went on, my sister was getting out of her depression from the loss of her friend, and the room was becoming suffocating. I asked her if she felt or saw anything since then, and she said it was her best friend. He said he came back to protect her from something. Her own depression, maybe. That is when I started seeing the man in my room. He stood just a few inches shorter than the ceiling, and he was nothing but a black, smoky mass. It terrified me to the point where I couldn't sleep in my room for two years, and yes, he was still there until I left that place. Every time I tried to sleep in there, I would see him. It was like he was staring at me, as if he wouldn't let me get near my sister. My last night I tried to sleep in my room, I had a dream of a ghost, a man that wanted to say something to me. He reached out to me, and I woke up in my bed being pressed down hard, as if to shake me awake. He slapped my hand down, hoping to find either my mother's or my sister's hand. There was nothing but the indentation of a giant hand on my bed that was slowly disappearing, as if someone was taking their hand from the bed. I called out to my mom and my sister. My mother rushed in and turned on the lights and my sister slowly woke up. I frantically told my mother what had happened, and she calmed me down and took me into her room for me to sleep for the rest of the night. I grew up in a city just north of Birmingham, Alabama, called Gardendale. I had a very unremarkable childhood, a very typical upbringing for the 1970s. When I was around nine years old in 1979, we lived in a small house on a very quiet road. My sister, who was one year older, and I shared a room at the time. Like I said, it was a small house. I slept in a bed next to the door of the bedroom and my sister's bed was across the room. One night I awoke suddenly from a deep sleep. It was one of those times when you wake up and you're immediately wide awake. When I awoke, my eyes focused immediately on a small figure standing to the right of my bed. I remember not being scared for some reason, and the figure just stood there. It was white and glowed, although it wasn't very bright. I could tell it was a female by the long hair, and she appeared fairly young. Naturally, I automatically assumed it was my sister and that she had gotten up for something and was possibly trying to scare me. So I remember looking across the room toward my sister's bed. The low glow from the figure allowed me to see my sister lying in her bed, sound asleep. I then turned back toward the figure, and we just stared at each other. The figure never moved or said a word. I didn't speak either. I just stared, after what seemed like forever, but what I believe must have only been several minutes, I turned back towards my sister and began calling her name. Again, the figure never moved. I was finally able to wake my sister. I told her in so many words that we need to head to our parents' bed. The next thing I remember was my sister and I jumping into the bed with my parents. My sister fell right back to sleep but I kept watching the bedroom door for the rest of the night. The next morning I wasted no time explaining what had happened to my parents. 
my sister actually admitted to seeing it too. After that night, I never saw the figure again, ever. Years later, while talking about the incident with my mother, she told me that I don't know what you saw, but I know you saw it. I could tell in your eyes you were telling the truth. Also, she made the point that a boy my age would almost certainly have exaggerated the details of the story. However, I didn't. I stated over and over that the figure did nothing but stand there, staring at me, never moved. Looking back now, I truly believe it was one of my guardian angels. The fact that I felt no fear whatsoever is proof enough for me that it was not evil. And trust me, at nine years old, I would have normally been scared speechless. Like I said, I never saw her again, but I believe she was just letting me know she was there. We still own the house and currently rent it out. No former or present tenants have ever mentioned seeing anything out of the ordinary. I assume if it was anything other than my guardian angel, other people would have seen it by now since it's been 31 years ago. Anyway, it's something I think about a lot, and it always makes me feel at peace. I have lived in Michigan for most of my adult life, but was born and raised in Middlesbrough, Kentucky, and before my parents passed away, I of course visited them often. One summer day while we were all gathered around my mother's table, enjoying her wonderful cooking, my father told me of a chilling experience he had. You need to know that my father was a devout Christian, a Baptist deacon, and would never admit to believing in ghosts or other paranormal phenomena. His firm belief in no such thing as a ghost was based on his insistent faith that once a person dies, his or her soul immediately goes to heaven or hell. His belief in demonic influence was no more than personal evil in people that commit murders, rapes, etc. His belief in strange creatures was totally non-existent, so his story of a little demonic creature must hold some validity. The house I grew up in had what we always referred to as the underfloor. It had no cement walls or floors, just hard-packed dirt. One day while he was down there cleaning out trash that had gathered, he noticed a huge rock over by one wall. He was not aware of how it came to be there, but decided to move it aside. He pushed on the rock, which proved to be heavier than he realized, so he was only able to roll it over. Beneath the rock, he saw a smoothly rounded hole in the floor. Getting down on his knees, he shone his flashlight into the hole which turned out to be an opening to a little tunnel. His flashlight lit up the tunnel all the way back to where it had made a turn. Puzzled, he stayed in that position looking into the tunnel. Suddenly, he heard something running back beyond that turn and knew that whatever it was, it was heading for the entry hall. He jumped to his feet and stared as the running feet became louder. Something was nearing the opening. Then, Quick as a flash, a little red being emerged from the hole. It stood on hind legs, had a long tail, pointed ears, and its hand-like forepaws were doubled up in fists. It glared at my father and stomped its feet in rage. It hissed and spat at him, then turned and ran back into the tunnel. Dad referred to it as a little red devil. Knowing I was going to be sleeping in that house tonight, and not relishing the thought of a possible night visit by this creature, I asked Dad if he had put the rock back over that hole. His response was, Are you kidding me? I poured cement into that hole. This happened in Hollywood, California in 2004 or 5. I was about 6 or 7 and a scared of my own shadow type of boy. I had been raised in a Christian family and have always had a personal experience with God. I know that God is real, which also means that Satan is real, meaning that demons have to be real. I would always sleep in my room at my grandma's house along with my grandpa. We slept on opposite sides of the room with a chair and lamp between us. One night, 
After having said my prayers, I went to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night because the lamp was on. I looked up and saw what at first I thought to be my grandpa sitting in the chair. Boy, was I wrong. This person was holding a book that was covering his face. He was dressed all in black and his hands were a waxing shade of gray. I thought it odd for my grandpa to be up reading at such a late hour. So I said, Grandpa, why are you reading so late? I got no answer. The book slowly lowered and I will never forget what he looked like. His eye sockets were sunken in at least three inches. His eyes were completely black as was his mouth. As I recall, he had veins from his lower lips to his neck, and they were black as well. Instantly, I was paralyzed with fear. I didn't know what to do. He opened his mouth and spoke, but it wasn't English. It sounded to me to be Middle Eastern of some sort. I cried softly, gathered up the courage to jump down and jump into my grandpa's bed. I then said softly, Jesus, Jesus, and then when I looked up, there was nothing there. I don't know what it was, but I know it was real. This story is of my mother when she was younger, in early teens. It was back in late 1960s or early 1970s when my mother's family, my grandfather, grandmother, two uncles, my mother and aunt, moved from Karachi to Islamabad, after Islamabad became the capital city of Pakistan. As my grandfather was a government employee, he was given a government accommodation, which was a three-room, one bath, and one kitchen quarter with a backyard and front yard. There were similar government quarters standing next to each other, all occupied by the government employees recently posted in Islamabad. Those quarters were built after clearing the woods, the places in Islamabad where the quarters or houses were not yet built were still covered with woods at the time. It was kind of spooky in Islamabad at the time because as soon as the sun went down, no lights could be seen and people used to stay indoors due to spooky darkness outside. When they settled in the house, they started experiencing unexplainable things like sleep paralysis, lights going on and off on their own weird noises, etc. As my mother and her siblings were scared, they started sleeping in one room. However, this could not stop the things from happening. As my mother told me, they all used to fall asleep as soon as the clock struck 12 midnight, no matter how hard they tried to stay awake. This kept going on for a while, until they kind of got used to it. However, one evening the siblings were discussing the things that were happening and especially talking about the entity that used to come over them and pin them in beds during sleep paralysis. My mother got emotional and bragged that if this thing came again, she was going to hit its head with a shoe. That night they all went to sleep, all in one room, when sometime during the night my mother sat up in her bed with her eyes closed and started saying out loudly, Hit the head with the shoe! Hit the head with the shoe! Only her voice was a male voice. When she kept repeating this over and over again, my eldest uncle got out of bed, grabbed his shoe, and hit her head. Poof. She went back to sleep. So, the demon took his revenge. I reside in an apartment building that, from what I was told, used to be an insane asylum long ago. I've been living here for the past nine years and have had some very paranormal experiences here over the period of that time. Here are just a few. One night there was a bad storm resulting in a complete power outage. So there I am in pitch darkness in the entire vicinity, not just in the building. I lit two candles encased in glass containers with paintings of Christ on each. One candle was green and the other was red. I think the colors may have been of some significance in witchcraft, but the pictures of Jesus on them is all that mattered to me. The candles illuminated my whole area, 
They were each placed in large open windows. I put them out before I fell asleep. At approximately 2 a.m., I was awakened by a horrifying demonic presence at the foot of my bed, but it wasn't visible. The best way I can describe its sound is like that of a cow being slaughtered combined with a full-grown roaring lion and grizzly bear. It was absolutely terrifying from the way it sounded. I dreaded to see its appearance. While it roared at me, my chest suddenly started hurting and my body was completely paralyzed, nor could I speak. This lasted about 20 seconds, then it was gone and everything was back to normal. Then I got up, blessed the place with palm leaves and olive oil in Jesus' mighty name and disposed of the candles. Everything was peaceful afterward, until recently. One night out of my bathroom, the door was open and is right next to my bedroom, came the devil himself, making a most awful noise. This time I saw a dark figure, but couldn't make it out because this seemed to be taking place in the spiritual realm. I couldn't physically move, but I could spiritually, so in the spirit I quickly made the sign of the cross and the evil entity suddenly vanished. One night in the spirit, even though the shade was down and I was three stories up from ground level, I saw a pair of red eyes peering at me through the window while I was laying in bed. Then I saw a little black imp running upside the wall of the apartment building, attempting to come in through the window. Suddenly a huge angel appeared with a very large pointed sword and shooed the imp away. My encounter happened May 2007 in Simi Valley, California. As a kid, I had some paranormal experiences, but nothing like what I encountered in those caves I went to. I mean, it literally changed my life. I was 19 at the time. My friends Ryan, Orion, Zach, CJ, and I had heard about the Manson Caves, and one of our friends knew where to go. So we decided to go one day. It was all kinds of sketchy. We had to sneak through someone's backyard to make it up into the hills. As teens, we really didn't care. We just ran through as fast as we could, got through a bunch of bushes, and there we were, in the hills. Our buddy didn't actually know where to go like he said he did. He just knew the caves were up there somewhere, and there was a lot of area to cover. We eventually stumbled on a small hole in the rocks that looked like it led to nowhere, with the words Hell Hole painted and carved all around it. So everyone wanted me to go in first, saying things like, It's not that deep and I can see the bottom. They almost got me killed, because if I had dropped in, I would have died. We dropped a small burning branch in there, and it just kept going and going. We wondered how to get in, so we came back the next day with flashlights. On our way to Hellhole, we found another cave with all sorts of graffiti around it, so we went in. It seemed kind of small at first, just a rope that took us down, then a big room with a little entrance to a den. We went down to the den and hung out for a bit when we realized in between two rocks we could see another cave. It looked huge. That's when everything started getting weird. Our buddy Zach freaked out that a guy was staring down the crack at us all of a sudden. We all looked but saw nothing, but right when that happened, a very thick fog rolled into the cave we were in. It got so thick so fast, we couldn't see a damn thing, even with flashlights. That's when we heard growling and loud footsteps. We bolted out so fast it was insane. As we stood outside catching our breath and wondering what the hell that was, we heard something in the brush. It was huge and coming right for us, and we were freaking out. Then out popped a group of other kids. They were something like 13. Totally random. They were going up to Hellhole and knew there was another entrance other than a hole in the ground, and they had walkie-talkies. It seemed legit so we went with them. Let me tell you, these caves were not legit. They were damned evil. 
First we had to army crawl for about 10 minutes through some little hole and it took us to a big room. The room with the hole in the top I almost dropped down and below us was a hundred foot drop. Seriously, it was huge. There was a rope so we could swing across. We got across and started to carry on when we started hearing whispering. We all stopped and listened. The whispering turned to laughter. It seemed far away, but being stupid kids and teens we decided to carry on. A few minutes later I asked my buddy Orion where Ryan and Zack went. We realized that we and one of those random kids were the only three together. Everyone else was either in front or behind us. We didn't even notice they were gone. The kid used his walkie-talkie, but it was all static. We didn't really know what to do. We were just kind of lost in this cave alone at this point. Then we saw it. A crazy looking old man, but nothing in his eyes. I mean nothing. He had none. He was pale as all hell and he was laughing mindlessly. We had no idea what to do and the one kid booked it so Orion and I did the same. We didn't know where to go so we tried retracing our steps back to the entrance. We got to a very hard part to go back through. There were these slides, basically two rocks with tiny crevices between them that acted like a slide. We started climbing back and I felt something grab my leg. I freaked out and Orion shined the light on it. It was as if the old man we saw was there for a split second and vanished. Literally that was what all three of us saw. We kept going and all of a sudden it was as if I had snakes slithering all over me and I started screaming but so did Orion and the other kid. Then the feeling was gone and they had felt it too. We left and Orion's grandma had left him a voicemail. She's a psychic medium so she said she felt something dark happen to him and wanted to make sure he was okay. She told us we had to come see her immediately so we did. Right when he walked in she said, you seem okay. But when I walked in she said, honey, what the hell did you just bring into my house? I had a demon attached to me she said, I had to be cleansed. She had me lie down and had my friends form a circle around me and hold hands. What happened next I didn't expect in the slightest. She started saying a spell or something, but whatever it was she pissed this thing off. I thought the room was shaking until I realized it was me and I nearly blacked out. I started feeling as if I was being strangled and then finally was able to breathe again and I watched a huge shadow-like thing, I don't really know how to describe it, above me and vanish through the wall. She explained to me later that I had a demon latched onto me as if it was waiting for the right time to possess someone. She said something about me having a white aura and making me vulnerable to its presence but also making me able to resist things like possession. I will never forget that day, ever. Sorry for rambling so much about the cave part, but I feel what led up to those events is important. I have since dealt with one other demon that was very malicious, but I will have to tell that another t- another post.